Hey everybody, got another video here for you. This is uh, Building Guitars Without a Real Shop, Part 2, Larger Hand Tools and Power Tools. Um, in the first video, I covered basic hand tools, pretty much all of which are right there. Um, we'll put a link. Uh, so, yeah, basically what we got left in the way of hand tools is the stuff that's like, won't fit there. So I just toss it in a box on a shelf. Uh, you need, what do we got? Um, I've got a larger chisel. I don't really use it much, but if I had to do some chiseling, I've got like one larger chisel for, for shaping wood. For making holes, uh, an inexpensive hand drill. Uh, drill bit index. This is titanium for doing metal. You don't really need that for guitars, probably. You also probably don't need a, a huge index like this one. Something with, you know, half as many bits would probably get the job done. Um, one thing you do want to do, these are not fluted. So you have to have a half inch drive chuck in order to fit the larger bits. Anything over three eighths, which is somewhere around here, um, and it won't fit in, uh, in an everyday electric drill truck. And then there are, will be times in some builds where you might need this. Don't buy it till you need it, but when you need it, you got to have it. So no way around the long wire. For, for routing your, your wiring, drilling all the way through a body in order to route some wiring. If you start getting into this, eventually you'll come across some place probably where you're going to need something like this. Or you might look out. It all depends. Um, an X-Acto knife. This was actually a real cheap kit. So, it was a good value. But you don't need a whole kit. You know, just a knife and a blade. That's it. Um... Basic VOM, reading resistance on pots. Yeah, I mean, I've also got an LCR meter, but um, but this will get it done. At least to say, you know, this is a 7K pot, that's a 14K pot, and so, that kind of thing. Or a 7K pickup and a 14K pickup, I mean. Yeah, any place there I said pots, replace that with pickups, and that's what I meant. And of course, a little baby leveling beam. And yeah, longer ones might be nicer, but hey, once again, this will get her done. And that was the least expensive one. Pretty much everything you see here is going to be like the cheapest thing out there that'll get the job done. Uh, step drill. Very handy, even though I'm not using these so much these days. But when you got to go big, you got to go big. So that's one way to go big. And you get more sizes to choose from than with like a a whole saw kit so and then moving on to power tools for shaping wood you you can cut stuff out with a circular saw all you got to do is you know clamp down a piece of wood or something for a guide for the saw and you basically turned it into a into a table saw and then jigsaw yeah it's not as nice as a band saw but it will get the job done if you're like you know Cutting out body blanks or whatever. Um, planes, you can go hand, you can go power, I'm lazy. Um, yeah, there are times when you're going to want to plane stuff down. So, yeah, definitely. Sander, you know, basic quarter sheet, uses regular sandpaper, no expensive discs or anything like that. Uh, cheap router, router bit set. Uh, Dremel and Dremel assortment thingy and uh, actually I do most of my routing work with that right there and you know if I was going to cut a whole whole pickup or something I'd use this thing but if I'm just like doing anything small or enlarging a cavity or something it's all like this and then for soldering I use a gun. I took three years electronics, so I had no fear of using a gun. I actually even get impatient using a gun. I could probably use something even hotter, believe it or not. But yeah, you do need to be careful. It's probably best to stick to around a 60 watt on an iron. 
And I've got like one of those little things that has the alligator clips and the little arms for holding stuff. Those are real nice. I don't usually use it. What I'll end up doing is I'll just take the needle nose and some kind of rubber band. And I'll just go like this kind of a thing. And that right there, put the rubber band there. Now, they stay closed and it'll hold my wire or my, or my output jack or my pot or whatever I'm soldering on. And so, yeah, that's good enough right there, really. I mean, if you, you, if you find that you're doing something super crazy and you actually need one of those claw thingies for soldering, the third hand soldering thing, then they're pretty cheap too. But you can do this. Um, I've also seen a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll take like all the electronics and they'll stick them in a piece of cardboard, kind of like a mock up of what they're going to be in their position for the guitar. And then they'll like pre wire as much as they can that way. And that's another thing you can do that means you don't have to buy yet another tool. So. And then the only other things left are these that I don't really use that much. I used to use hot glue on a few things, and but nowadays I'm pretty much doing everything with CA glue. So I don't really use the glue gun anymore. And I've used that in order to do the, the truncated trapezoid profile on some eBay necks. But... It's very aggressive, and in the end, it's it does save time. You might like, you know. I'll usually I'll usually start with a Shinto rasp, and three quarters, four fifths of the time, I'll just do it all with the rasp. Sometimes, you know, if I'm if I'm impatient for some reason, I'll grab this thing and I'll use it to take off a little bit of material first, and then I'll go to the rasp. So. And that's pretty much the only thing I use this for. If I was doing like, you know, belly carves or something like that, I might also use that. But um, other ways that you could do belly carves, um, tell you the truth, a draw knife. Really, a draw knife. I'm, but then again, I'm not doing a whole lot of that. You, I'm building, there's an example. These days, mostly, I'm either building, like, kits or mods, or I'm building this kind of stuff. These minimalist guitars. Ugh. Here. Try not to cover the microphone or anything while I'm doing this. This really requires two hands. Hold on a sec. Okay, so these days I'm building stuff more like this. This is another one of these minimalist guitars that uses the, the leg bar and the strap bar. And so as you can see, if you take a look at the body on this thing, it's just a triangle cut out of plywood so yeah there wasn't I mean all all the shaping and shaping work is really on the back of the neck on this guitar and the rest of it is just you know cutting stuff to size and smoothing it out so there's a little work around the heel here area but that's about it um so yeah you know I'm not doing a whole lot of like gluing together body blanks and then carving them out and gluing together, you know, neck blanks and then carving them out. So if I was doing that all the time, you know, just building tele clones like a factory or something, then yeah, I'd probably want a bandsaw. Now I've actually finally stepped up and gotten a couple of real power tools, not hand power tools. I've gotten, uh, I got a small drill press back there. 
and way back in the corner. Let's see if I can get back here. There is a small craftsman table saw back here. So, but I don't really, I mean, it's like, let's see, I've used, I used the drill press to drill holes for one wooden control panel on one of these builds here somewhere. And I was getting a lot of tear out using a hand drill. Like, uh, where the hand drill went? Where'd the hand drill go? I'm missing the hand drill. Wait a sec. Had a hand drill here. Ah, there we go. Yeah, for drilling holes on the power side, the hand drill. And once again, this is just, you know, cheap, like $35, $40 drill. Once again, good enough to get the job done. I mean, it's like you can probably get everything I've got here on the table for under $300. I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe closer to. Yeah, what with what with all these power tools now, you'd be you'd be at three, maybe even a little more. So, I mean, it's like you can pick these things up for under fifty, and that's probably under fifty. That's definitely under fifty. This is like maybe thirty. Yeah, this is like maybe thirty. Again, this is like you know twenty dollars or something, and Weller is like twenty dollars or something. Uh, the grinder's like maybe 35 and glue gun, you know, 10 bucks. I think the whole kit for this thing was under 10 and, you know, that thing was under 10 That thing was under 10 Drill bit set, yeah, they can be a little pricey. Like I said, you don't need a big one and you don't need high, sp you don't need drill bits that are rated for metal. You just need wood drill bits, so you can get away for like 20 bucks on a drill bit set, so. Yeah, not a lot of money required and for all this stuff really the way to do it is just buy it as you need it that's the thing to do that way you're not spending money on any tool that you don't need I mean I've got a number of other tools that I bought in anticipation of needing to work on guitars but I don't really use them so I'm not even bothering to show them to you I showed these two, and those are the only ones that were close enough to something I ever bother using to even bother showing you. And yeah, you might want to consider one of those if you're going to do a lot of wood shaping. But other than that, this is it. And then the only other thing I've got is I've got a box of sandpaper. I've got a box with like dies and and buffing pads and stuff like that and uh and i got a box with or a couple boxes of uh spray paint and lacquer and poly and other clear coats and that's it a box for there's a there's a parts bag for each build and those are all in one box and then there's a parts bag for each kind of extra leftover part I've got in my parts collection. So I've got a bag of bridges and I've got a bag of, of uh, nuts and a bag of tuners and a bag of pickups and stuff. And that's all in another box. And so I've got like maybe three, four, five, six boxes worth of material. And then just these tools and those tools. And that's the whole shop. And for tables I'm using these things. That's a one one section unit off of one of these plastic utility shelves, and uh, and you just you know put some foam down on it in order to protect your work, keep the guitar nice and you know safe, and uh, some place around here is my 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 support for my uh, for the neck. That's one more tool you're going to need when you're working on guitars. Wherever mine went, it fell. It's, it's around here somewhere. But yeah, uh, actually, when I was working on the harp guitar, if you saw that video, I was actually using a roll of toilet paper a lot in that particular case for that guitar, just because of the shape of it. But yeah, the next support would be like the only other tool. It's here somewhere. But um, so yeah, it can be done without a shop, and you know if I'm gonna. I'm going to cut something big. I might 
take it outside to do it or do it that way and I've got a bench vise but no bench so so if I need to put something in a vise really need to put it in a vise for some reason I can always you know, drag that thing out and just set it on the ground and use it, it weighs a ton so it's not like it really moves too much on its own so yeah as you can see you don't need a lot of stuff you really just it doesn't take that much it doesn't take that much and the best thing to do is just buy it one tool at a time as you need it you know start with your basics the tool the, the most used tool in this in working on guitars once you've shaped your wood basically you know you've got your you got your saws and chisels or what have you for shaping your wood and then after that you're using phillips head screwdrivers more than anything absolutely phillips head screwdrivers the one place where you don't want to skimp is on the quality of your phillips head screwdrivers because it'll make all the difference in the world so try to try to find a nice set of screwdrivers for the phillips head and you want probably all three sizes a, a one a two and a three or zero one two whatever it is but anyway okay so that's it for this video and i'll see you all in the next one everybody have a good one